So this is session two. In session two, we are taking up globe, latitude, longitude. I think this is there in class six. If I'm not mistaken, in seven also something is there related to this, ma'am? Six yes, to standard it is there, ma'am. Then uh, pressure yes, belt like that things it is coming in seven also. Ha, so that we will longitude. do another day, ma'am, because yeah. that also is a very important concept. Today, globe, latitude, longitude. In fact, I feel four and five children are very small. So that understanding, they may not have so much of an understanding. But in six, when we do this lesson, it is like a first lesson of social science, they feel. Because globe is something with which they can all relate to. So when we start with the lesson on globe, that is the first introduction to social science. And they understand, yes, the earth is like a globe. So they relate to it also. So in this lesson, we will be identifying latitudes, longitudes of pole, equator, tropics. And along that, we will gain knowledge on how they help us in locating places. Yesterday also, I touched upon that. Today, we will see the calculations also. Then we learn to calculate time with the help of latitude. This is a concept which children have to very clearly understand. How is time calculated? And then we will understand the importance of time zone also. Along with that, we are also doing heat zones. Now, what are the pedagogies that we do when we are teaching a lesson like this? Of course, we are developing spatial, visual, experiential learning. Mathematical use of globe for understanding latitude, longitude. Along with that, we are exploring what are globes, what are maps. We are identifying climatic maps and other resources. Various type of assessment techniques can be given for this for children. Children can be asked to draw latitude, longitudes on globe, on paper, and how maps are made for atlas. That understanding also they can be given. Right. So let us start. This is what the globe looks like. Yesterday also we looked at the globe. Now, what is a globe? When we start social science in class six, we should always start a class by showing globe because children can relate to something which they see very well. So a three-dimensional model, I hope everybody has globe in their school. So you can take it to the class and show it to the children that this globe is a true model of the earth. What do you mean by model? That you should explain to them that this is how the earth looks like. So globe is a model of the earth and shows that the earth's shape, land, oceans, distances, directions, as they relate to one another. Now the globes are of varying sizes and types. So very, very difficult to carry them also because they it is a three-dimensional object. So that is one of the drawbacks of a globe. That is not possible for us to carry wherever we want. But globes can be rotated in the same way as a top spin or potter's wheel is located. We can carry a top spin to class or we can carry an apple and put a say a point through it to show what is the axis and tell the children to imagine it that it is a globe. So various ways we can teach globe. So it is up to us how we can teach. You can share your ideas, teacher. How are the ways you are teaching globe in class six? What objects are you using? So that we all can understand each other and learn from each other. Anybody is using any particular things to teach globe besides the globe itself? Or you can take an balls orange. Balls we are using, ma'am. Orange. Plastic balls. In that, uh, even they can balls. make lines and all. So, latitude orange, and orange. Study also. Orange is easiest. And plastic ball definitely will help them to imagine what a globe looks like. And they can also draw the continents. If it's a plain plastic ball, you can help them to draw continents and show how it looks like on a globe also. Now, through the globe, we have an imaginary line. Now, this word, imaginary line, 
for them you know if you talk their small children they will think actually there is a line going through the globe so this we have to make it very clear to them that it is an imaginary line that passes to the center of the earth and it joins the two points two points on top and bottom now a needle is fixed through the globe in a tilted manner which is called an axis now this tilted also we should get that concept very clear with them what do you mean by tilted so axis of the earth is tilted by 23 and a half degrees to the straight line so from the straight line the tilt is 23 and a half degrees this we should make them understand now so advantages of the globe it shows the exact shape of the earth that is the first thing when a child looks at the globe child can imagine how the earth looks like it also helps them to understand day and night we can very easily explain when we are first time explaining rotation revolution day and night how seasons are caused that time we have to use a globe to make the concepts clear it also gives an idea about the tilt of the axis this tilt of the axis how the earth is tilted all that idea you cannot get from any other thing besides the globe and it also shows us the exact position and area of the continents and oceans most of these points you all have covered now disadvantage definitely first is it is not easy to carry it wherever we want and only a part of the globe can be seen at a time you can't see the entire world together and of course you can't see the details also which you all have already said and it cannot be used to study a specific part of the earth also it does not show towns cities districts roads railways etc so for these things we feel that globes are we need much more something more detailed than a globe so we have understood already about the globe what are the advantage disadvantage in class you can go do a small activity which they can do impromptu in 2 minutes or explain in the class also like when you look at a globe do you see more water or land this will help them to understand why globe or earth is called a blue planet also so when we ask this this question definitely children will say we can see more of water because water. it is more of blue in the globe they use the correct colors also where do you live on the earth let them understand by looking at the globe where india is how small india is in the globe and in india which city which state we are living in would you rather own a map or a globe explain your answer this you can have a open ended question some children may say map some children may say globe so let them let their ideas be open and let them give their reasons also now how do we introduce latitude and longitude very very simple way of doing it is when we ask the children what is your seating position in a class suppose your mother wants to know your seating position in the class how will you explain it to her here the child will answer your mother wants to know how will you explain the child may say i am sitting in row 1 this is row 1 this child we are taking next in column 3 so row 1 column 3 so see a criss cross has been formed so how do we position measure a position of town or city on a map same way in a map you will have rows and columns these rows and columns or these lines are latitude and longitude very very simple way of introducing latitude and longitude in class so there are so many places on the earth how is it possible to precisely locate just one of them for instance what if i tell wanted to tell you tell a friend the exact location of your town on the earth how would you tell him or how would i tell him so we have to understand two lines are very very important two imaginary lines 
these are latitudes and longitudes these help us to find places on a map now we have to make them understand what is latitude what is longitude children very often they get confused what is latitude and longitude how to differentiate between anybody will want to say how do you do it how do you make them understand which line is latitude which line is longitude yes student what are latitude lines of latitude run horizontally and they are measured in degrees the equator is the most important line and the biggest latitude it is running through the middle of the earth and it divides the place into the world into two halves in the north you have north latitude above the equator is north latitude below the equator is south latitude this you should always teach with the help of diagrams and you should draw on the blackboard also the north pole is 90 degrees north latitude while the south pole is 90 degrees south latitude this you can a uh, problem is sabin ma'am was saying they don't know degrees and angles now if they knew it will be very easy to understand they can put a but they know line. the two words like the horizontal vertical lines they are clear and slant uh, or um sleeping or standing line also they are that clear is. yes uh, yes that both but degrees uh, i am saying degrees yeah. when you are teaching so if they do the protraction that 90 degrees will be north pole 90 degrees south south pole of course we can also tell them that the entire globe is 360 degrees and we are dividing into four so each one is 90 90 90 like that also we can explain so latitudes are these lines with a parallel to each other and every latitude the longest or biggest latitude is equator this we should tell them because the fattest part is in the middle and as you go to the north and south they decrease in size and finally in the poles it becomes a dot so north pole south pole and very very important to write n for latitudes which are to the north of the equator and latitude which is south should be written as s alongside the degree now so another imaginary line running on the globe divides it into two equal parts so this imaginary line is equator so the first imaginary line which we had done was the axis the northern half of the earth is known as northern hemisphere and the southern half is called the southern hemisphere here we can explain the word hemisphere half a sphere half a globe so they are both equal halves therefore the equator is an imaginary circle and it is very very important point of reference when we are saying i live in northern hemisphere so the latitude definitely will be north so it is like a point of reference whether you are to the north or south of the equator and all parallel circles from the equator to the poles are called parallel of latitudes and they are measured in degrees but we have to remember there's a big difference the real earth has no such lines we these are all imaginary lines like the axis this we should make because they should not have this idea in head that when i go to so and so place lines will be on the ground because i do in mp i somebody is from mp here also no in there's a place in mp where you have the line drawn because topic of cancer is passing through that place i have heard that there's a place where the line is drawn so but the children should not have this idea that always the lines are drawn these are all imaginary lines so besides the equator which is a most important latitude and of course north pole south poles are important there are four more important parallels of latitude their tropic of cancer tropic of capricorn arctic circle and antarctic circle and children should know the degrees also see in it is very very easy to construct also if you know the degrees how to make the lines when we were small we were taught how to make tropic of cancer how to draw tropic of capricorn they are all mathematically done so we can teach the children if we have extra time how to do that also so these are the important lines of latitude and they demarcate the heat zones why 
why they are called heat zones. That also we should explain to the children what is the effect of it. So that will come to later. Now, where is zero degree? The equator is zero degree latitude. It is an imaginary belt that runs half point between the North Pole and South Pole, and it is the most important latitude. Now, why it is most important? So the midday sun is exactly overhead at least once in a year on all latitudes in between the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn. So why this heat zone? Why is this called the torrid zone? What is the uh, reason for that? Because the sun is moving between these two, Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn only. And the maximum heat is received in this zone. That is why it is called the torrid, very, very hot zones. But beyond that, or beyond the Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn, the midday sun never shines overhead on any latitude. So the angle of the sun's rays goes on decreasing towards the poles. That is why as you move away from the equator, it becomes cooler and cooler. So the areas bounded by Tropic of Cancer and Arctic Circle in the Northern Hemisphere and the Tropic of Capricorn and the Antarctic Circle in the Southern Hemisphere have moderate temperature, neither very hot nor very cold. These are therefore called temperate zones. Now, beyond the Arctic Circle and Antarctic Circle, we have the North Pole, South Pole, which are very, very cold. And it is because the sun does not rise much above the horizon. Here, we can give them the idea of the six months light, six months darkness, because later they need to understand this also. So beyond the Arctic Circle, sun does not, is not visible only. And then above the horizon, it is not available, visible. Therefore, its rays are always slanting. And these areas are called the frigid zone. So let us see the heat zones of the Earth. You have torrid zone between the Tropic of Cancer, Tropic of Capricorn. Then we have temperate zone. And finally, we have the frigid zone. So these are the lines, parallels of latitude, and these are the meridians or longitudes. Now there are, now we have to understand the degrees. So there are, there are 360 degrees of longitude and the longitude line of zero degree. See, all the longitudes are same size. They are all similar. So, Finally, it had to be decided that one of them had to be decided as a main one or the prime meridian. So what did they do? They decided since it was Greenwich Observatory which decided it, they decided the line which passed through Greenwich in London, near London, that was called the prime meridian. And all this was a reference point, how equator is a reference point for latitude. Same way. Prime meridian is a reference point for longitudes. So all the meridian to the right of Greenwich are called East Meridian. All the longitudes on the left of the prime meridian are called West Longitude. And also the hemisphere is divided. So Eastern Hemisphere, Western Hemisphere. So there are 360 degrees of longitude and the longitude line of zero degree is known as the prime meridian and it is dividing the world into Eastern Hemisphere and Western Hemisphere. So 180 degrees of longitude to the West and 180 degrees of longitude are in the East. So how many lines of longitude are there total? 360 because a circle, it is 360 degrees. So the westernmost long longitude, now we have to make this concept clear to the children that 180 degrees is one line only and it is going round the earth. So the westernmost longitude we call as 180 degrees west and the easternmost 180 degrees east. But both are the same longitude. So this is called the 180th 
meridian and also the international date line, right? So there are 360 longitudes, but when we count the latitudes, they are 90 and 90, so 180 plus one, that is the equator. So 181. So this, we have the prime meridian in the middle, which is dividing into Eastern hemisphere, Western hemisphere, so clearly you have to explain to the children what is Eastern Hemisphere, what is Western Hemisphere. And here we have the equator dividing the world into Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere. So by using the equator and the prime meridian, we are dividing the world into four hemispheres. What are they? Northern, Southern, Eastern, West, right? Now, so the imaginary lines that join both the north and south poles are called longitude. Meridian passes, prime meridian is passing through Greenwich near London, and it is also called Greenwich meridian. Now, the lines of longitude are referred to as meridians. A longitude is an imaginary line running from the north pole to the south pole, that specifies the east-west position of a point on the Earth's surface. Longitudes are measured in degrees, east or west, and the reference point is prime meridian. So prime meridian is a zero degree longitude, and all the places in the east are called east longitude, and all on the west will be called west longitude. Now, how are these two useful to us? So how are latitude and longitudes useful to us? So as lines of longitude and latitudes cross each other, they form a grid. So both the lines will cross and then grids are formed. Any position on the earth can be located if the latitude and longitude are known. So now, for example, suppose I take a place in India, can be on 20 degree long latitude, and it can, in a place in Africa, can be 20 degree also. But how will we know which place is where? For that, we have to know the longitude. So only latitude will not help us to locate a place. We need the longitude also. So grids on the map help us find a particular location. So longitudes also help us to calculate the time of a particular place. So as lines of latitude, longitude cross each other, they form a grid. Now, any position on earth can be located if latitudes and longitudes are known. So the grids on the map help us to locate a particular location. And longitude also along with this help us to calculate time of a particular place. How will this happen? Let us understand that. Now, let us see this activity. There are two important lines of longitude listed below. Answer the following question based on lines of longitude. Now, here you have prime meridian and you have different longitudes given. Again, in this picture, we have international date line and various longitudes given. Now, where do all the lines of longitude meet? Oh, yes. Oh. In the poles, poles, North Pole and South Pole. South so poles. which degree of longitude share the same degree? 180 degrees. Prime meridian. Prime meridian. And uh, ideal. 180. Yes. 180. Ideal. What is another name for longitude line? Meridians. 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 What is another name of the Greenwich meridian and what is its degree? Prime meridian. Prime meridian. So prime meridian, and, meridian, prime meridian, zero degree. Zero, zero degree. degree. So simple exercise we can do in class in five minutes also for children to arouse their interest and they will understand better also. Uh, prime meridian. Right. So this is the world map and we can see the longitudes and latitudes. Now, this is a zero degree. Very, very clearly we can see and here we have the Eastern Hemisphere, this is the Western Hemisphere. 
right london we can see and we can very easily show the children that india is on the east so what does it means if you are on the east what does it means if you are on the west this also we should explain to them so if you are in the east means you have to add the time see 360 degrees longitude so for every degree how much difference of time will be that we should help them to calculate so the time of a place depends on the longitude that passes through it therefore the standard time for each country is usually taken as the time of the central meridian that passes through it now first we should understand this is 360 degrees right 360 degrees means one day 24 hours so let us find out calculate for one degree when you do the mathematical calculation unitary uh, what is it called uh, what type of calculation is it called see for 360 degrees 24 hours so one degree how many hours right so if we calculate that yes 4 4 minutes 4 minutes 4 minutes 4 minutes every degree 4 minutes difference comes so if prime meridian is 12 noon so what will be the time in india so what is the longitude of india we should say that and we will see that when we calculate 82 degrees 30 minutes east so when we are calculating we will see that 5 and a half hours five. when comes 5 hours 30 minutes 30 minutes so we are 5 hours ahead of greenwich ahead of greenwich correct oh, so if it is 12 if it is 12 noon in greenwich it will be 5 hours 5 hours 30 minutes it will be pm will will be ahead of yes 5:30 pm 5:30 pm right so this idea you should clearly tell them that is why when you go to different places we see different times on so so time zone concept we have to explain to them how with every degree a change in time takes place but in india big problem we are facing india if you calculate the western most longitude and the eastern most longitude we see a difference of 30 degrees so 30 degrees 30. means how much difference of time will it be 120 120 and 20 minutes 120 minutes means 2 hours to us if a person is going from guwahati which is in the extreme eastern part of india to gujarat for bandar in western part there'll be a difference of 2 hours means we will have to change our time our watch but we don't do it why this again they have to be explained in class 9 so if we explain to children this basic concept in class 6 and 7 it becomes easier for them to understand in 9 also so the time of a place depends on the longitude that passes through it therefore the standard time of each country is usually taken as a time of the central meridian that passes through it thus every country for india we have a standard meridian so in india 82 degrees and 30 minutes east longitude is determines the standard time we don't consider any other longitude the longitude which is passing to the middle of our country near allahabad we are considering as a standard meridian to solve the problem of changing our time when we are moving from one place to another if we if this was not followed we will have to change the train timings flight timings everywhere there will be a problem so to avoid this confusion the center most line has been taken as the standard meridian right 82 and a half degree somewhere here is taken as the standard meridian now what is meant by indian standard time and why do we need it so ist short form for indian standard time now why do we need i just explained india is a large country almost 30 degrees of longitude are passing from the westernmost state 
to easternmost state of arunachal pradesh now to avoid this confusion of chaos of timings in different states of india one standard meridian is taken to have a uniform time for the entire country so what is the difference between local time and standard time this is another question which they have to face what is it now the local time of a particular place refers to the time determined on the basis of sun's apparent movement so when the sun is directly overhead me that is 12 noon or local time of that place on the other hand when we calculate the time of a place based on the standard meridian that is the standard time so there may be difference between them so time zones local time is when we use day every day and regulate our life that is we are using local time when we are eating sleeping seeing the sun we can do lot of things now universal time is that when we use the time that is agreed upon marked worldwide that is the time zones which we use so the time zones are broad strips that measure 15 degrees wide so time zones differs from the neighboring time zone by one hour because one hour means 15 degrees so in us if you see it is such a big continent it has four time zones eastern central mountain pacific because it's a very big continent right so they have to have that but greenwich mean time is a time that is registered at greenwich in england so greenwich mean time also is given for calculation of time and this is another name for the universal time another way of putting greenwich mean time is universal time the international date line what is it this is the 188 meridian and why is it called the date line because wherever we cross it the date advances by one day if you are going to the west and it goes back you gain a day when you are going to the east right that brings us to the end of my session